Hello everyone, Craig, WJ6F. Today's video is going to be about dummy loads, and we'll get to it right after this. Welcome to or back to the channel. If this is your first time here, please subscribe, and don't forget to click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a new video. Why do you want a dummy load? It's one of the most important test items you can have in your ham shack. It prevents you from accidentally damaging your radio, and it also keeps you from being that guy that sends out a signal when he's trying to test up his radio or amplifier. First one we're gonna talk about is the MFJ260C. It's air-cooled, can handle 300 watts for 30 seconds and 100 watts for about a minute and a half, and 25 watts continuous. Its impedance is 50 ohms, the VSWR is a max of 1.3 to 1 from 0 to 650 megahertz. The dimensions are 2.5 inches by 2.5 inches by 7 inches long. You can get this in an end connector as well. And they also sell one similar to this, which is a full 1500 watts. Next one is the MFJ250X. Now this comes in a 250X or 250. If you get the X, you don't have any oil coming with it and you're going to need to order that separately. Comes in a one gallon jug of transformer oil. This can run a kilowatt CW or two kilowatts PEP for 10 minutes. You can run a continuous duty at 200 watts CW or 400 watts PEP. It does have a vent up on top for safety. Do not, one of the warnings they have in the owner's manual is do not use motor oil. Mineral oil may be used though. And one of the things they recommend is to really study the durating curve here prior to use. And you can see the solid line is how long you can transmit at a given wattage for mineral oil and then the dashed line is for the transformer oil. They do give you the owner's manual written right onto the can to include all the specifications. Now there's a few videos I saw out there that were talking about when you fill it with the transformer oil to fill it three quarters of the way and that's wrong. It's actually fill it three quarters of an inch from the top to ensure that you have proper coverage of the resistor inside. Now here's what the VersaLoad looks like on the inside. I have this big old resistor. It's the MFJ115 50 ohm. The vent right here on top, pull off the little thing. Next one up is another 300 watt dummy load. It's the MFJ251 switchable dummy load. What this one does is it simulates high and low impedance loads of one to one, two to one, and three to one. It's useful in testing equipment to verify proper operation or troubleshooting any station problems. You have your five resistance values right at the input. If you leave it in the off position, it just acts as a normal dummy load. According to the manual, the MFJ251 works through a series of relays that place each of the resistors in a series or parallel to create the resistance values needed for the two to one or three to one matches. You're gonna need a 12 volt DC source to supply power to this unit and it does come with the wire for that. For this portion, I'm gonna be using my Yaesu FT991 Alpha. One of the things it says in the instruction manual is to make sure when you're using this on anything other than the off position to run it in low power to eliminate the possibility of damaging your transceiver. So we're going to be using 5 watts. As you can see in the off position, it's just a standard dummy load. Got your perfect 1.0 SWR. Hit 3 to 1. Two to one. On the low Z side at three to one. And at two to one. Now this one is the grand poob of dummy loads. This one can handle 2,500 watts. It's the MFJ 265. It can handle 2,500 watts for about 60 seconds. And 300 watts continuous. Now this is powered through 110 volts, is fan cooled, and uses SO239 connectors and weighs about five pounds. 
All the pertinent information is silk screened right on the cover of the unit. The SWR is less than 1.25 to 1 below 30 megahertz and less than 1.4 from 30 to 60 megahertz. Now it uses four 50 ohm non-inductive super high energy density resistors and they have to be installed. Each has an incredibly high energy density of 7,000 joules per cubic inch per second with a voltage gradient of 10 kilovolts per inch. Now I'm going to show you how to install these resistors. You do have to be careful when handling them though because they're made of a fragile ceramic material. In step one, the first thing you want to do is remove the cover. There's six screws, three on each end, and when you go to put it back on, make sure that you put it back on the right direction. Now the manual says to start with the center ones first, and when you push them in, to push them in from the center, not one end or the other. Like they said, these are fragile. They come in these cardboard tubes. It is a tight fit. I'm a little nervous about breaking one of these things. There you go. All four of them are in. Throw your cover back on. Make sure you have the RF input uh, writing by the cable input. There you go. Everything's all put back together. All six screws are back in. All you need to do is plug it into the wall with the provided cable. Hook it up to your radio. This is the perfect dummy load for those that run the full legal limit of 1500 watts. I want to thank Richard at MFJ for sending out all these dummy loads so that I could try them out and make a video on them. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Thanks again. And while you're at it, check out some of these other videos.